All right. Um, so I was mistaken yesterday about what this thing did, um, and that's because I'm missing part of this knob. These these have clear rings in them that allow you to see the numbers, and uh, this one was missing. So I didn't realize that it actually can change units, and so it'll do it'll do smaller currents, not as small as I want, but it will do smaller currents. So let me demo that to you now. Sorry about the noise. Okay, so we have it set to 10, and here's the decimal place, and it, so it's it set at 11, yeah, 10, 10 milliamps, 20 milliamps, 30 milliamps, 40 milliamps. So I did contact clean all of the switches so they work better now, so here's 10 milliamps. If I swip, uh, change the range, uh, it comes here and it goes to one, one milliamp, right, one. And if I change the range, it comes over to here. Now I'm a tenth of a milliamp, so I can go one over here. Now I'm, now I'm one milliamp. I can change the range again, and it comes back to here, but now it's 0.1 milliamps. Go to the microamps over here. So it's 100 microamps now, one zero zero. And if I go another one, it's now 10 microamps that, and it's, it's either, it, it's not outputting correctly at the 10 microamps. So this is the smallest setting it has is the 10 microamps. So it'll do, it'll do tenths of microamps. So 100 nanoamps. So it's better than I thought, not, not what I want. It's better than I thought. Um, and it does look like, like it needs some calibration. There's a whole bunch of pots on the bottom and stuff, but yeah. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that knob. I think I can probably manufacture one somehow. Um, and, uh, but now I know how it works. Uh, it does have a lot of ranges. It has 100 milliamp, 10 milliamp, one milliamp, uh, 100 microamps, 10 microamps, so those are the those are the ranges that are missing on this thing. All right, let's kill that. Um, I took the uh, this knob was all messed up. I took it off, cleaned it up, so you can you can read the numbers now. The potentiometer is still a little bit dirty, but it's a sealed kind. I can't get in there with contact cleaner. Uh, it would need to be replaced if if I uh, want to keep this thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I need to fix that ring over here because that really confused me and I'm sure it'll confuse somebody else who try to use this thing. But uh, that's pretty good. I think I need to get out the, uh, I need to get out the manual and read how, maybe how to calibrate this thing. But let's go ahead and read a little bit about the uh, specifications of this thing. If I just read the specifications, I probably would have known what it was, what it was all about. All right. so. Current plus or minus one microamp, a uh, hundred, one thousand microamps full range to one plus or minus one thousand milliamps in four decade ranges. Now, uh, it also has me uh, thinking this thing is actually multiple quadrants, so it'll act as a sink as well because it's plus and minus. So we can use this as a um, as a uh, current sink. So I'm beginning to like it more and more. Uh, three digits, four decades, plus minus plus and minus three uh, three hundred volts. That's that's for its uh, sources and sinking, um, floating resolution point zero zero five percent, three digit re readout. Wow, as a pro bipolar programmable constant current amplifier pr voltage programming input. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. You can actually program it with a voltage on the back to be a current. So it's, it's voltage to current amplifier. Constant current amplifier voltage programming. Voltage programming. Maybe it's a current amplifier, but you set the gain with the current, with the voltage. Interesting. Transfer function, plus or minus 10 volts. Accuracy, yeah, 600, 600 hertz minimum. Okay, so it will do, you actually can modulate it from the back um, up to 600 hertz. Uh, optional programming, let's see, stability, load regulation, noise, environment. Uh, 
145 watts. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is a little better. I uh, made a made a knob for it. So milliamp, 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 microamp, microamp. So now it makes sense, right? Now, now I can intuitively figure this thing out. Okay, so I'm going to put it on microamps. I have 100 uh, milliamps. I have 100 milliamps. I'm going to be driving an LED here. We'll turn it on, and we get a really bright. We we'll get a very, very bright LED. Um, if we go here down a range, now we're at decimal places move. Now we're at uh, 10 milliamps. Go down another decimal place. Now we're at one milliamp. So. Not much going on there. We'll go down another one. We're at 100 microamps, and it is, it is just barely lit up. And now we're at uh, something else, and it's just not, not happy down at that lower range there. Um, but one thing I've noticed. Uh, so let's go back up to the 100 milliamp range. Okay, I'm going to go to 200 milliamps, and uh, this light came on which is we're under a voltage compliance. I had set this voltage compliance to 12 volts because that's what this light bulb is. So now, now we're in a compliance of 12 volts and it's not gonna give us anything more. It's gonna, it's gonna clip at the, at the 12 volt level until we go down below it. I think this thing runs at about 100, I don't know, 120 milliamps or something like that. But at 100 milliamps, we are in constant current mode and the uh, compliance limit is off. So, yeah. All seems to be good. I like the uh, I like the new knob. 